Hey, George. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm well. How are you doing? Very, very well. Very, very well. Uh, how is winter treating you? <laughs> well, I must admit, today wasn't this bad. Eh? Uh, the afternoon. Yeah, no, was... today was was today was much better. Hmm, the afternoon was fairly warm. Uh, a bit, a bit windy though. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I saw some of the younger generation in t-shirts. And... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I didn't. I didn't want to join them. But I thought uh, I should leave them. <laughs> but it was nice and warm. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like the, we're gonna have early July weather as well. The oh, windy exactly. July weather. Okay. Is it uh, looking like getting cold again? Uh, a bit windy, not necessarily cold, but but windy. Windy. Yeah. yeah, and that, that 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 actually makes it very cold. Actually, that would. Yeah, yeah, it can be. You know, I mean, you you can't enjoy the sun very well when it's very windy. Yeah, and definitely the evenings are the evenings are cold. Mornings are very cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I wonder. I will be sleeping and, and, and thinking it, it's as cold as I feel. And when you go outside, you realize that, no, it's, it's just a house inside that is very cold. Yes. But outside, is uh, the sun is shining and it's warm. So I've learned not to listen to how I feel in the blankets. <laughs> yeah, get up and go and run. <laughs> By the time you've done a KO2, you, you are, you're all pumped up and ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> so you, do you still run every morning? No, no, not every morning. Um, certainly, uh, I try three, four times a week. Yeah. Um, sometimes in food Saturday. If I miss Saturday, I try and do it on Saturday. Uh, and then I see. Uh, three days in the week. But I got to do it in the morning because if I miss the morning, ah, that's it. Yeah. It's be early in the morning, and uh, yeah, and that's when it's really truly cold. But you find once you're on the road, it's amazing. Yeah, it really you enjoy it. It just changes, uh, and your day becomes so focused. Yeah, mm. Mm. I certainly prefer yeah. this to uh, the, you know the debilitating heat of October. You know, there's times where it's so hot that. Even walking, running, it becomes so lethargic. Ow. This you can do something about, of course. Yeah. The heat just drives you crazy. Okay, so who, who are the ladies joining us today? Uh, I'm not sure. I know Mishti is having a women's circles uh, session that she's facilitating, so she won't join. Katu says she's not at home. So she will try later, though, to join. And uh, I haven't heard from uh, Doc and Salome. So, yeah, it might not, uh, we might not have uh, enough uh, people joining. We might not have and a we have, And we have competition uh, against uh, Euro 2020. So some some people might watch want to choose to watch the game. Oh, there's soccer, there's football. Okay, okay. Yeah, what, what there's football, and then there's Kaiser Chiefs against the uh, uh, wider wow. Morocco. Okay. So, okay, so so we might we may just be only ourselves. <laughs> we are not ranking very highly on the, <laughs> on the priorities there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, not 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 on the weekend. Uh, remember, we said that uh, by this time, on a Saturday, people have finished watching their games and they done their family things. It's a time to relax, but but that's exactly the time that the uh, football organizations are, are targeting as well. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, we're not- but I was, I was, was it's also it's also light it's supposed to be light hearted. So yeah, it's yeah. fine. Uh, some will join, I'm sure, they, because I put it on on link I mean on Facebook and uh, on Twitter. 
We have oh, somebody okay. um, who has entered the studio, Z-H-O-U-G-O-N-G, 688. I wouldn't know who that is. Uh, if you don't mind, you can say hi and tell us who you are and where you are uh, logging in from. Sometimes I can't identify people with the, the email addresses they use. Okay. So there's one person that is joining us. Welcome. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, you can also put uh, a message on the chat box. Yeah, you, you and I, George, will be the two in the speaker's platform. Hopefully, Salom and Dr. Susan Geller join, and, uh, and we also welcome Catherine. Well, no, that's fine. Just, uh, I did tell you about the ACC, right? Yes, you told me that you were doing your application for the ACC. How is it going? Oh, I didn't tell you. I, I'm actually certified now. Oh, congratulations. Yes. Well, you, yes, were, yes. you were in the middle of it. Oh, so I, I didn't, because I got certified in the week. And so, ah, uh, I shouldn't, uh, yeah, well, I'm going to put it on LinkedIn so that everybody can get to know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But they're also no, no. doing something else, uh, ICF. They are yeah. doing, um, I would like to call it a dry run. So they want to change the CKA assessment as we know it. Yes. Post knowledge assessment as we know it. They want yes. to introduce a new one late 2021. And so to test the new system, they have asked volunteers to mm. sit in a four hour exam. Uh, to test the system, those mm. results won't 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 affect you in any way. In the sense that they won't affect your credentialing, or they won't give you uh, a, any credentialing. But it is actually helping the ICF to mm. see how this new system. So I'm I volunteered in that because what it does is just helps me to go through the core competencies, the code of ethics. Uh, the definitions mm. and 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 just refresh. So I, I, mm. I'll, I'll I'll be sitting one, uh, and actually I had uh, diarized to do it tomorrow morning. Wake up early in the morning, and put in four mm. hours of the exam. And so you mm. will wish mm. me luck, and <laughs> we'll see how that it goes. We yeah. remember my core competence, but it's it's it, because these things you have to keep doing it them over and over again. Yeah. And then yeah, the absolutely. last one is that I was doing uh, the Maslow leadership course, mm. uh, and so we finished that uh, the the part of it, and what's left now is just a, a, a quick exam, like like a similar to a CKA course knowledge yeah. assessment, and then that that wow. will be it, and will be certified. So I've been active and busy uh, because I saw here you were talking about the different uh, uh, coaching approaches and uh, philosophies uh, and uh, frameworks. Yeah, approaches. And, yeah, because I did an interesting one, which I also finished uh, two weeks ago, and it's called Positive uh, Intelligence Quotient. And mm. it's, 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 it's the brainchild of Coach Shizad Shamin. He's a Stanford uh, University professor. Yes. Um, and it, it, it focuses on the self and mm. identifying the things that hold you back and how you can overcome that and in the process of your clients. And so mm. it talks about that each one of us has a judge inside of us. The judge who judges self, who judges others, who judges circumstances. Mm. And, 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 and within that, that, each of us also has what is called the sage. The sage is the wisdom. <laughs> this is... Yeah. Uh, so. So uh, your judges have got what he calls accomplices. And these accomplices are your sabotage. These are the things that hold you back. 
So, and he's got nine definitions of those. Some are pleasers, controllers, hyperachievers. So if I give you the example of a hyperachiever, being an achiever in life is a great thing to have. But when yeah. you go overboard and you become a hyperachiever, that strength becomes a weakness. Mm. Uh, and so for me, I identified uh, a controller and a pleaser. So the pleaser is easier to explain. Mm. A pleaser is somebody who has good intentions, is loving, cares for other people. But his, uh, his uh, saboteur is the fact that he goes overboard. So instead of drawing boundaries, he goes overboard in pleasing other people and expects people to react to his uh, his uh, position of being a good person and when they don't he gets upset <laughs> because whereas yeah. he should draw boundaries and so being a pleaser is 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 being good taken too far <laughs> And like an mm. so your sage is when you allow your your wisdom now to then draw those boundaries. So if you're a sage, so there are many many. But his approach I like because it first talks to you as the coach mm. before you can then Absolutely. use that system to help others. And it's a fantastic one because mm. it does. It's not you 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 first. It's about. Uh, it's not pointing a finger at others. It's about individual pointing a finger at yourself and saying, "Who am I? What am I? How can I get better?" And then use that to to help your clients. I absolutely yeah. love that. <laughs> wow! It says it's called positive intelligence coaching. Cotient, cotient. You know, cotient is Q U O T I E N T. Cotient, cotient. You know, like IQ. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. Positive intelligence coaching. Yeah. But it, it, I would recommend that, that coaches go through that because it's mm. so, for me, it was a revelation about some of the things that I kind of like struggled with. Uh, but in the process now, I'll be able to use that uh, to help others mm. in their quest because mm. you can mix different approaches to the benefit of your client because nothing is custom concrete. All these approaches, guys uh, borrow for one aspect or other from each other to build, uh, shall we say, an approach that they mm. see as the best to help people. Mm. I actually, I actually would, I would like us to maybe spend a while just talking. I've got a book here written by Diane Leonard it's called mm -hmm. Coaching Models, A Cultural Perspective. Right. A Guide to Model Development for Practitioners and Students of Coaching. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, there are some training institutions that make it mandatory that before you graduate, you need to give a, a try to coming up with your own coaching model. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. And but all coaching models follow more or less the same framework. And uh, she has written this book to assist those who are interested. And I'm not quite sure whether George, uh, your training programs that you attended did address the issue of uh, uh, development of coaching model and take you through that process. There are mm -hmm. different institutions. Some institutions don't do that. They 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 will want people to use the coaching models that exist. But I like I like the combination mm. uh, that mm. Mm. because mm. the coaching is always very sick. I'm, uh, what do you call it? Uh, situational. Yeah, I find myself yeah, sometimes you. where. My own coaching model helps me a lot in a situation. And sometimes I will go to a very basic of the basics, like a grow model, when I'm stuck, you know, because sometimes mm -hmm. you... Mm -hmm. So so I think you, 
the, the, my understanding is that uh, there's no good, bad, good or bad model, and that's why in the ICF oh, yeah. uh, uh, credentialing, they they won't even ask you anything around your coaching model, but they will ask you about a framework or something like that. So, so I thought maybe this topic will be quite interesting for those who are really interested. I'm very interested in the models, but I don't always uh, use my model in coaching. It, it, it always depends on a situation, but perhaps the starting point is the understanding of the difference between these terms. You know, we talk about a coaching approach or a coaching philosophy Coaching framework is quite very easy. I always say that in every coaching model, in every coaching, you have a perspective, you have the process and the coaching purpose. So that to me explains what a coaching framework is. When you go into a coaching session, you you always have that at the back of your mind, that you need to establish the perspective of the client. You need to, mm-hmm. to, to have a process that you are going to follow. And the process could be as simple as how many sessions and uh, and each session, how is it divided? It's in the checking in conversations and checking out. Mm. And then you produce a report or a feedback to the client. That's the process. The purpose yeah. is, is basically what you are coaching for. What is the coaching program for or what is the session for? And I, mm. I will hold it there and just ask your purview because sometimes we throw in these terminologies and, and we leave each other uh, behind. Uh, so that is how I understand the framework to be before maybe we can talk about other things. Mm. Okay. Though I haven't actually uh, gone through a uh, program where I've actually had to develop an independent uh, coaching model. Mm. But uh, you will find the more you do the various programs, the more you will incorporate learnings from each as you relate with your with your clients. And so I suppose mm. what, 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 what one can do then is then to reduce your own process into... Mm. Uh, put it down on paper and say this. This yes. is, is yeah because with 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 Shiza that I'm talking about or Maslow that I have done, it's it's a, all a variety of uh, aspects that they have borrowed. So for instance, with the uh, Maslow uh, Center for Executive Leadership, they actually will be come, wanting to come and open up somewhere in Africa. But they coach, uh, and it, theirs is very heavily focused on executives and leaders. That's, 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 they don't have too much of life coaching, etc. But in there, they borrow aspects from others. So, for instance, uh, they have borrowed uh, a, a large chunk of what is what is uh, what we call. Um, uh, what is the higher faculties? They call the mental higher faculties. These are uh, perce- perception, imagination, memory, will, reason. Now these they have broken them down them down into questions as you coach a process. And so, for instance, if I give you an example, you, if you are coaching somebody and you you use a question like so. Imagine how it would look like a year from now. Mm. You are now tapping into their power of imagination, which is a which is a higher mental faculty. Or when mm. you ask somebody, to, if you look at it from the perspective of your boss, or, or what you're doing there is you're asking somebody to change his perception, to look at it from another perspective which is one of the higher mental faculties. So you will find then that with, with the, each of these coaching programs, they have borrowed from it. I don't want to be hard and fast to say you must do this, you must do that. Uh, because I know, I know a lot of the guys do that for purposes of getting IP. So you get intellectual property around that, and that becomes a model that you, you actually can get people to use your and you get paid for it, etc. 
maybe long term it's it's a great thing but uh ideally what what you're looking for is giving value uh immediately to 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 your client there's a great article i saw that talks about um six approaches to coaching and maybe i could talk a little bit about that if you don't mind yeah yeah it talks about humanistic coaching is number one and and and, and this one is about it has everything to do with helping leaders reach their full potential. So you've heard of the term self-actualization as in Maslow's, right? So, yes. So the Maslow center that I, 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 I'm working with, uh, the, Abraham Maslow's uh, writings are at the, they form the foundation. Yeah, so they, the they are the humanists, basically. Yes, they are the, the yes. humanists. So it's self actualization you are you are you are you, are, you are, the leader is probably in some form of crisis and the coach is helping the leader find greater stability and confidence mm-hmm. so it relies heavily on the relationship being established between the leader and the coach uh, and that uh, the, when you develop the trust then you create the allow the leader to be ultimately creative and and he then goes up the ladder. That's 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 humanistic coaching. And I, I, I suppose for a lot of executives and leaders, this is the one that they look at. Hmm. Yeah. They, they, Great. They, they, hmm. Carry on, George. Yeah. Then yeah. the next one, which this guy has, is the adult development coaching which focuses on the different stages of adult development. It means that the coach is working to figure out where the leader is in their development and helps the leader to move forward toward a more mature understanding of authority and responsibility, as well as a greater tolerance for ambiguity. You know, we t- people talk about the A-type uh, leader who is very bright and... but. Uh, hasn't reached the level of maturity and tolerance to be able to deal with moving uh, with moving situations. Where, where, so, so that ambiguity, so when you're developing that person, he's referring to adult development, coach, you are developing that guy to be able to be mature and, and, and have a greater tolerance for uh, ambiguity. Um, and then, uh, then he talks of cognitive coaching and is, is centered yes. around addressing the maladaptive thoughts that might be getting yeah. in the way of a leader. Mm. 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 Uh, and, uh, it's more like dealing with the thinking and the mind. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And then the, the, the positive psychology model for coaching. Uh, it is uh, uh, this approach is often seen as a strength based approach and uh, here the coach would help the leader expanding expand existing strength as a way to build positive emotions creating greater happiness and in the process high levels of performance uh, and sometimes it can be used to achieve specific goal uh, but it's primarily designed to change perceptions and attitudes in a more positive direction you know so positive psychology. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the way it says. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know. This is very close to to this positive psychology coaching is very close to my coaching philosophy, which also happens to be the slogan of my organization: the mm-hmm. mind, the journey, the, de- the mind, the journey, the destiny. It's okay. all about positivity and looking forward, mm-hmm. and, and 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 a little bit also of the cognitive coaching because. It's all about uh, refocusing the mind, you know, mm. and then and then when you bring those the the humanistic, you also then taking moving away from uh, the mind going into the emotion emotions, right? Am I right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So 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 that you are addressing. Thank you very much. You are addressing, and I'm not interrupting. I'm just I'm just adding. You are addressing the topic of the coaching approaches. Because there are hundreds out there, and and this, hundreds, this, yeah. This, yeah, and 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 I like the ones you are just because you are just demarcating them. 
And then I think it will be very good uh, that one get a hold of that article. But you can share with the listeners how they get a hold of that article. But get yes, on, I George, I just wanted to add. Yes. Um, uh, but, uh, but as I said earlier, um, I think when you're asking the coach what is the coach's role, it is to help the coachee, to help the client become better. And so if you're going to be tapping in all sorts of approaches and it results in that, in that positive development, of, that's, that's what us as coaches we look, for, look to. Yes. Uh, Actually, what is very interesting, George, we had a very interesting debate when we were doing the, the coaching models, frameworks, and, uh, and the tools. We will come to the tools as well because a lot of people sometimes will confuse a tool with a model. It's not the same. A tool is something that enables you to magnify something. Let's say you uh, you use um, you could use an assessment. An assessment could be a tool you use okay. to bring okay. out something into the surface, or you could use uh, NLP could be a tool. But there are people who are doing what they will call NLP coaching. But there are those who will use it as a tool. Now, a debate around various coaching approaches is as is is as sometimes as difficult as trying to debate around religion. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't want to even go to a point of saying somebody's approach is not is bad and somebody's approach is good. It is, it is just a myriad of tools out there that are available. But the model is almost like a, you're packaging your coaching uh, according to a particular thinking. I mean, there's a model mm. called the the uh, the bridge for instance the bridge model and and George I don't want you to lose your thought process because I want you mm. to finish the last two points but but I think it's a, it's, it's just trying to enlighten each other as we move if you look at the the bridge model coaching mm -hmm. model which actually influenced my my coaching model the mind right. the journey the right. destiny which is made up of the framework and then and then the model being basically the shift from the current state of being to the future state of being and the coaching sessions being the connecting links. Now, the bridge model talks about, it is actually an acronym, yeah? The mm -hmm. bridge coaching model. Uh, uh, I think you can get it at, uh, if you go to consulting-house.eu, I think these are the guys that are, are using that model. Mm. That, that is their website. So B, B stands for building trust. That is establishing the coaching relationship, which mm -hmm. is basically what you and I will talk about, building a rapport with a client. Right. The but they put that as a, yeah. as a, yeah. So they take that as the first step in their coaching approach. Mm -hmm. But they call it a model because that is basically what those letters, B-R-I-D-G-E, then are the pillars of their model. But then if you then go to it, you say, okay, okay, they're talking about the same thing, building trust. You can't start a coaching process unless you're connected and build a rapport with your client. And, and, and if you look whilst you're there, the ICF core competences, yeah. um, building trust is, is yeah. cultivating trust is core competence number four. Yeah. And it's cultivating yeah, trust exactly. safety. Uh, so yes, yeah. yes, that's uh, that. Carry on, on. So what does the so, R write? So, so, so that, that the is, state? yeah. And then the 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 R will then be reflect, identify values and competencies. So, and it's, it's so interesting that they bring it so early. But I said it, it doesn't matter where you bring it in. But they say that you need to identify values and competencies. I guess it's those of the client. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's especially in the executive coaching. And then once you have done that, then the, the I is then identifying actions, which which if you go into a grow model, that is the last part, isn't it? That there must be a will to get to a result, but that then some people mm -hmm. at the grow, they put grow to action. It becomes a grow, G-R-O-W-T-A. Because the grow model suggests that uh, the, the, the W, which is the will, to make an effort to work towards the results. Uh, they, some people feel it's not as strong enough to say there must be a concrete action that you and I, as a coach and coachee, agree that we are going to do 
to make a difference. So they they yeah, they, yeah. they put the, the eye as they identify in the actions. Like that means knowing what to do. And that then the is, D uh, that is captured in the ICF core competencies as 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 uh, core competency number eight, which is yes. uh, facilitates facilitates client growth, which basically says partners with the client to transform yes. learning and insight into action. Uh-huh. Then promotes client uh-huh. autonomy in the coaching process. So uh, the, 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 the A facilitates client growth. You, you, you facilitate in their growth through action. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you see now that the model is nothing else but grouping all these competencies or these things in mm-hmm. a simplified way that when you are sitting in a session, you, are, you keep on, on following that to organize your coaching. Yes. And you, yes. it, so you can choose any other abbreviation. The other, there's another one called Fuel Coaching Model. And I mean, I can come to that, but I, I like to talk about the bridge and then go back to, mm-hmm. your, to, your, to, your, to your article. Then the D is then, once you have identified the, the actions, you move into the D, which is basically deploying resources. Yeah? Create supporting structures. So, so, so in other words, you don't leave the coachee alone. Uh, together with him or her, you look at whether they are, there is a possibility of getting resources to build the capacity for them to take care on those actions. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah? Mm-hmm. If, for instance, the action was for the client, the coachee, to undertake a, an Enneagram assessment. Um, and that's costly. That means they have to go to a professional who put them through that. That means we must then identify or deploy resources. They must make resources available for that to happen. And then the G, which is uh, a, a, a quite interesting, it says it's called generate possibilities, which if you look at that, if you go into a grow model, that is actually uh, is what is, is what uh, 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 is that is that they are. Uh, uh, you know, goals, uh, uh, realities, realities, exactly, options, options. That will be an option. Here it comes at G as what are the options, what are the possibilities? In other words, you ex- expand the current experience to say oh, okay. what, what, what are the other options that you can look at to resolve this issue? Mm-hmm. And lastly, the E, which is what we will all do at the end of every session, or at the end of the coaching program, which is evaluate, which is quite a very crucial uh, uh, in any coaching. One way or another, there must be a way of looking back and say, are we achieving what we intended to achieve? Here they talk about assess the change that has taken place. So in my coaching model where it said you uh, shift from the current state of being to the future state of being, for me to be able to know that that shift has happened, I need to engage on a on a form of a particular form of a evaluation, either in a conversation or in an assessment, or by just observing and then bringing that to the light of to the client to say, look, uh, I see the shift has happened. Have you noticed it? And we converse and agree. So, so that is basically the, the bridge coaching model. But let's 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 hold it there because I wanted to share with the listeners and more others which are mostly just abbreviations. There are those who are pictorials, by the way, where people just show a picture. I mean, I saw a very fascinating one by a real one or a colleague of mine just drew a robot. You're sitting at the, at the, at the, at the, at the traffic light, for those who don't mm-hmm. use the word robot. <laughs> you are on this side, and the, it, the, the, light, the traffic light is red, and you stop. And when the traffic light is stopped, you, you are in a, in a, in a thinking and then and, and, and getting ready for when it open up. And, and the questions are, what, what are the things that actually bring the green light for you to move forward? Okay, okay, okay. So, so it's really just, a, a, it's just creative way of really simplifying your approach to a client, but also to help you in a coaching process when you experience stuckness. That you say, for instance, if you follow a GROW model, if, if you are, if your client is sitting on the grow on the goals goals and is not moving to the realities, you will remember that you no know, man. There's an R that comes under after the G that we need to move. Now that we have locked up at the at the goals, can we just interrogate the realities? Is it realistic for us to achieve what we want to achieve? 
What are the realities that we are faced with? What are the real situation on the ground? So, so it's almost like a picture in your mind. By the way, we had this argument to say, the mortals are not there for the clients, are there for us coaches. It's for us. You don't yeah, have to tell the client that I'm now yeah. moving you to, <laughs> I'm moving you to the next stage. No. They are markers for you to be able to, 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 to exactly. be able to follow a process that ultimately resolves it to client. Because that's mm. that's how best can we yeah. help this individual, and uh, yes. we do it by by following a certain process. I was trying to look for something here, which I yes, was. Yes, but please, I, I'm, I'm curious to know of the last three uh, 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 coaching, you call them the coaching, um, what did you call oh. them from the article? Okay, so so we talked about... Uh, the last they, one was... He just calls them approaches. Yes. Just, he calls them approaches. Um, yes, but I coaching approaches. Mm. The, the, the other one was uh, systemic coaching. Uh -huh. So it takes into account a wide range of factors that impact performance. Uh, its focus is on looking at patterns that may be causing drag on a leader's performance and seeks to disrupt them. And then it also highlights the importance of making small changes that can add up to big results over time. I like I like this point because most often when you are working with clients, um, and 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 I also have a little bit of sport in the background, so I play play golf, etc. One thing that you will notice in coaching is that the expectation from clients is they're going to make big changes, but sometimes it's not big changes that are necessary. It is small tweaks of amazing performance. And mm. so the systemic coaching is in at, at the, what, what's causing the drag. And just can we do that will add up to big results? Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And, and you will find that with the most the most talented of uh, whether it's athletes or it might actually take a little change, swing change that brings mm. fundamental coaching. So systemic coaching is that. Then the last one he talks about is goal-oriented coaching. Mm. Okay. And uh, it's about helping leaders to regulate and direct their interpersonal and personal resources to better attain mm. all the more goals. But the primary method is to help the leader Form a well-crafted goals and development, uh, and develop an effective action plan. Action. That last one, that lower last one, George, uh, makes me want to say that he should add the seventh one, which would, if he has a goal-oriented coaching, so he ought to have a process-oriented coaching, which now speaks to your little ticks. <laughs> it, 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 uh, I, I I really do uh, uh, like the systemic uh, coaching aspect about little tweaks because all too often people will look for the big things to change. But, mm. but your role as a coach is to hear the whole process, to understand where do I want, where does this man want to go and what is he mm. doing today and where does he want to be. In the process with the quest asking questions, you should be able to pick out the little things that are holding him back and start with them. Mm without making big, big monstrous changes. Have you ever experienced a situation in a session where, I mean, let's say you have uh, six coach sessions program or 12 sessions program, mm. and you come out of this coaching session and you feel like, you know, I don't think we've made any impact. Yeah. But then, but then you get, then you remember that you know you have got twelve sessions coaching program. Certainly, there will be days when there won't be much to do, but you have probably just have one thing that you addressed that contribute to the journey of twelve months, and and and, and so. So I'm just responding to your point you are raising, that if you are very 
goal-oriented type of a coach. I can imagine that you'll be critical of every coaching session, whether you have achieved anything. But then if it fits into a 12 months coaching program, you might have a session where you feel like you have not achieved anything, but you have at least had a contact with the client. And the fact that the client hasn't raised any alarming issue, hasn't brought any disturbing issue, that could also be a positive feedback that you are, things are stabilized. Mm. Okay, two things from what you say, because you know, and if if anyone is listening, and and uh, uh, to say that as a coach goes through, so if you're talking about your twelve month uh, coaching process, there's regular check ins, whether yes. it's every two months or whatever, to see where are we, what progress are we making, are you happy, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So using that, you should be able to tell. But to the point that you raised, that you you actually can leave a coaching session say. I don't think we did anything. Yeah. But the converse, what I then had uh, is we were discussing this same topic at, at Maslow's, was that a client can actually leave the session and think nothing has happened. But when they are at home and doing something totally different, it just hits them that, hey, something yeah. big was discussed on that. And if they act on it, sometimes that can actually result in the quantum leap. So mm. it, it's important to know that the coaching is, is, is actually a journey. You, you don't it's go a into a session and say, uh, how I've achieved, show you at the start of each coaching session, you have your outcome that you wish to make, to, to achieve. Sometimes you do that. But when you're outside of that, you because you've been putting these thoughts into your subconscious mind, you can actually set a process there, a thinking process that somehow, somehow you have a eureka moment where the guy has a eureka moment out there and that's the benefit of coaching because you're, you, you have these thoughts with you all the time. I also want to say that it's actually human to be critical of yourself as a coach. And not feel happy it's with yourself. It's important. <laughs> it's important, I say. Um, I think somebody said at some stage that uh, the world belongs to the discontented. Uh, that the guys who make progress are the people who are not contented with where they are. You must always mm. be asking yourself questions. How can you get better? How can you get better? So all this... Uh, ICF has a serious emphasis on continuous learning. Mm. Mm. Continuous learning, and it is actually one of the core competences because you have yes. to be better than you were yesterday as a coach. Mm. Uh, because and if I you think stay it stagnant, makes sense. you're not giving. Yeah, get on. It makes sense because you are not coaching static uh, people. People are changing and are evolving. Mm. 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 And they are developing, and uh, you can imagine uh, the dynamism of the environment that they function in. And that's why it's a partnership. Actually, the biggest learning is in your interaction with your client uh, as well. And that's why reflections are so important. I, I always enjoy, uh, after every session, trying to capture what was actually the themes and the and the conversations and the things that they've been in line. In fact, I've just done that with one client. We are meeting the halfway of the program, and I said, you know, I put when I was putting together the themes or the or the the topics that we need to use to reflect on this on the last six sessions. I actually I actually felt very happy that there's quite a lot we can use, and I'm looking forward to hear what. She thinks because I wanted her to, to to bring up uh, more themes because I'm going back to the mm -hmm. coaching reports and I'm I'm extracting these themes from our conversations and some of the, the the actual tangibles that were brought up as issues that needed to be addressed. And then I said, this is what I could extract from our reports. But think about it. In the next session, we are just going to do what George we will call the, the mid-term review. If there's one thing I always want to advise fellow coaches, is you might not really write a lot of... No, so, so... You can make as many videos as you want. 
<laughs> no problem. Yeah, carry on, sorry. You might not actually not be writing a lot of reports after the sessions, but one one report or review that I always suggest must not be left out is a mid-term review because it gives you the opportunity to check whether really you are on track and if mm. you have to mm. change, uh, you and the client can agree to change before it's you wait up to the end of the program. And then you have situations where there is unhappiness in terms of deliverables. Yeah, yeah. You must, you must always be checking in, checking in, checking in, checking in. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's, that's it. But, uh, yeah, so George, they... they uh, let's go back. So we... So I, I hope I have... Uh, clarified my understanding of what framework, coaching framework is. And then also the, the philosophy is the same as the, I would say the, the approaches that you've shared uh, at, uh, addressing the, the topic of approaches. There are many approaches, mm. but the mm. philosophy, the philosophy, I almost say it's, a, it's almost like a belief system of some sort. I don't know whether, a philo what is a philosophy in general terms? <laughs> Yeah, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Uh, Your way of, of of doing things or a belief system or what? Yeah, I suppose if you use the word belief system, is is probably uh, yeah. Because the, the day you find philosophy of everything, maybe yeah, the listeners yeah. can help us there because. Uh, we, this is a term that we use so common, but I always use it as, as like the, similar to the approach. It's a, it's, yeah, the quality here it says a theory or attitude that acts yeah, as a guiding is. principle for behavior. Ah, uh -huh. then then is that is, that is much good. But it's similar to beliefs. Yeah. So yeah. so it's a belief system, a theory or attitude that acts as a guiding principle. Yeah. 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 So, so, so basically, there could be George uh, Tamara's philosophy of coach. So that's yes. the his theory that guides Absolutely. his thinking. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> that, that actually can be. So, uh, uh, in fact, let me let me the, the, here they're using a, a statement. Someone is saying, "Don't expect anything, and you won't be disappointed." That's yeah. my philosophy. That's this is yeah. someone making a statement. That's my philosophy. So Sam yeah. will have his own philosophy around around this. Yes. Yeah. So so I mean I mean coaching is also I mean we never we never talk much about positioning of ourselves as coaches. We always get positioned by the industry itself. Like I hear you several times, George. They, I mean I'm a member of ICF as well, but I must believe I must say that the last couple of, of of weeks of engaging with you, you are you are very much in love with ICF, and and I think ICF <laughs> is positioning you are coaching very so well that you don't feel there's much work to do in terms of explaining to people what coaches are supposed to be doing. You just get the ICF coaching competencies, and then you are sorted. <laughs> Am I right? It, 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 it it really is 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 very very. Uh, I think it encompasses a lot of, uh, uh, shall we say, philosophies. But it gives you a great framework uh, yeah. of of what a coach should be like, irrespective of whether you're using bridge or whatever. If you can cover all those aspects that they talk about in whatever uh, fashion, then you 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 you're getting there. So, for instance, we, we talked about bridge, right? Uh, yes. All those aspects that they talk about are here as as part of the competence. Yes. And so you 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 you, you can uh, you can uh, use uh, um, whatever shall we say model model, um, grow model, um, David Locke's neural leadership uh, models. All those models will contain the core competences. That a coach should have. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah. We can talk about this. Um, sorry for interrupting. Uh, um, the I I 
my university where I'm doing my studies now, I found mm-hmm. that the, as much as they recognize that there's ICF, but they, they are working very closely with EMCC. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and they, they actually write a lot of uh, uh, material for EMCC, the European Mentors and Coaches Council. Right. And right. Uh, and I must tell you that there, there, there's some amazing stuff that comes out there. And they very seldom, I mean, they, 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 most of our faculty members are members of ICF. And I think they've taught me something that all these bodies come from a different school of thought. Mm-hmm. Now, they, they believe very strongly that uh, they are positioning coaching at a different, they use the relational approach to coaching. So, so I, and then what I've then learned to do was, I think, I think there is so much you can get out of each of the body. I mean, the Association of Business Coaches as well, ABC, you know about them, right? Yes, and uh, I also uh, am a member of Webex uh, Business Executive. Yes, WBCS. Yes. Yeah. So they actually so, had their so, summit too for last week. Yes. So what, what I would like always to suggest is that it is always very helpful to look into each one of them if you can and you have time. Because uh, I think we are all agreeing that coaching is an evolving industry that is just so vast mm. that that I think what ICF have done very well was to be a home for everybody. But it does not necessarily mean that uh, the other smaller bodies, because I, I'm talking numbers here, cannot really bring in enlightenment into you. But, but when it comes to the coaching competencies, I think ICF has done fundamentally very well in partnering with PwC to refresh their coaching competency, they become almost like uh, applicable across the board. Because I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that you could have somebody listening to us on the other side who doesn't really work as closely with ICF as you do and I do. And then they, they might think that we are punting ICF. We are not punting ICF. We are just using it as, as a reference. And I, I myself have found the, the work that my university uh, a Halt International Business School, together with EMCC, I, I, you know they they doing some fantastic work there. So I, I am really that's why I'm saying that George, the George philosophy must come out, informed by ICF and and Maslow's and all those, <laughs> because it, everybody has a space. <laughs> Hence the coaching Absolutely. models and frameworks. You know. As you talk, I was kind of looking up uh, because I did. I also is I, I work through the neuro leadership. Uh, yes, history. and um, yes. David Rock is, is is really the man behind all that. And uh, yes. he 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 created a model called the Create Model. Oh and, yes, I, I I have seen it here. Just one moment, Mr. Kikoti. Yes, Kero. Mm. It talks about the current, then the reality, then explore yes. alternatives, tap, tap energy, etc. Now, yes. for me, irrespective yes. of which one you use, them, the idea yeah. is to get a client from where they are to where they want to be by mm. exploring where they are and then creating actions that will actually happen. That's why. That's why I was saying earlier on. The models are not for the client. The models are for you, the coach. And you use whatever model that helps you to help the client, right? Uh-huh. That is basically what you are saying. Because, because you can imagine if you were to bombard your clients with all these models, I mean, they'll just walk away because why do I have to know which model you are using? <laughs> I just want you to have <laughs> Gordon, <Sam. laughs> Uh, if you go to your doctor and say, listen, I've got a, a, this funny thing in my stomach and he starts telling you the theory behind it, <laughs> just look at him and say, are you mad? <laughs> just give me something that will take the pain away and I'm gone. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's yeah. that's really a horror. Take that yeah. pain away. But, but I think what is very empowering, you just mentioned the, 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 the professor that 
that came up with the create model because I was going to talk about it, but just, just, just let's just complete your discussion. What is the professor? Oh, name? David Rock, yes. Professor David Rock is. Yes, David Rock is. He he. Yeah. So uh, when you hear of brain-based coaching, brain-based coaching, David Rock is is, is really behind that. The, 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 yes. His neural leadership uh, group of people. Yes. And, so let's just re- let's just for the benefit of the listeners, just repeat the acronym CREATE. Uh, I have here, and you tell me, George, uh, the C is for commit and contract or contract. Is that the same okay. as you have? All right. So what yeah. I have here, and it's, it's, it's when you are asking questions, so in the process of you asking questions, of the, you, you, you're starting from where, is the guy, where the guy is. Yes. So you're telling me, what's your current, what's your current reality? Then you explore alternatives. Then you tap yes. into his mm. energy to then create for. But, but, but back to that point, <laughs> it's 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 I I I I like all these uh, different models. I listen and I watch. The reality is, at the end of the day, can I help my client? There's also he. They have what they call the scuff model. If you remember, and all these really. You, you don't want to bombard people with models, but the point but is. But you see what now, 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 coach? now, what is what is what is now, George? Where 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 you are going to deal with a number of people? Coaching is uh, there is a big complaint that there's very little academic work that has been done on coaching, and and what the business schools and universities are trying to do now is offering a master's degrees that will be. Uh, uh, meeting the standard of any other uh, out there, research work and everything. And now they are saying that, yes, uh, the, there is a practitioner coach out there, probably George and Brassem are uh, practitioner coach, until I've started to enter the academic field and I got very frustrated. But I now start to understand because uh, um, there's going to be two types of coaches, and they are already. There are coaches that really are, academic, are pursuing academic work and doing a lot of research work, working a lot of psychologists, and then I'm sure Professor David Rock will be the kind kind of people that will be engaged at that level. And then mm-hmm. there is a, there is the applied side, which is the industry itself, where you and I and everybody else that is running a coaching outfit that are every day meeting clients and helping clients to resolve problems. So, 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 and, and I think we tap onto the research to find out what are they finding. The brain-based coach is there empirical research that has been done. So I think, I think this is really creating a very interesting discussion that I think we must explore. But let's, let's, let's understand that there is a need for academic work, but there is also a need for practitioner work, and the two are informing each other. Now, it's good to know what the academics are busy with, because I sometimes get very frustrated with my lecturers, and sometimes they will get they will get very excited with me bringing practical things from the ground, and they say, "Wow, Sam, let's have an interview with you because we want to find out what is really in real t- situation is happening." Yeah. So, so, but if you are a practitioner coach and you are helping clients out there, uh, you are many models and that you have done may not be helpful for them, but for you. What is your view on that? Yeah, I see complementarity, really. Uh, Yes. The the academics are absolutely, absolutely necessary. They do research, they come up with new theories, etc. For coaching to be where it is now, it mm-hmm. is because of the findings of the research that have come through, new thoughts, etc. And it, it yes. must continue to happen. Yes. And hence, uh, that issue around continuous learning and development. So both the, the, the research and etc. Et then it feeds into the practical day-to-day coaching. So it's not, it's not research for the sake of research. It's Absolutely. research for the sake of coming up with new theories, models, etc. That will then help the the ultimate beneficiary, which is 
the person who's been coached. I have a coach. And, and, mm. and, 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 and when I sit with my coach, there are things that I go light bulb. Like, oh, man, I didn't look at it that way. And, and, and mm. when it's explained to me, I, I fully comprehend. And so I, I do the same when I'm working with, with individuals. So I, I don't see any exclusivity at all. I see actually complementarity there between the academics and, and, and the practical. The only difference is that the academics will, will, will spend their time in a, <laughs> how do you call it, in the clouds, as it were, <laughs> uh, theorizing <laughs> and all that. Whereas mm. I, as the practitioner, uh, I can't spend time in the clouds. I, I mm. got to be helping this individual who needs it whether it's life coaching, executive coaching, this mm. individual needs help. Yeah. And so using the theories developed, et cetera, et cetera, I then apply that to help the individual. Mm. But 10 years mm. from now, new theories will come. And uh, mm. we will, we will there, there, is also, and there is also a drive by universities and business schools in general to bring uh, adjunct faculty members the, 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 ex, the, the practitioners <clears throat> into faculty because exactly the point you're raising, uh, research for the sake of research, it's no longer really ideal. The, the research yeah, it's a pointless be, exercise. I mean, must, why, why do be, that? Yes, must be implementable. Uh, and then what, what I find more and more, the, the members, the faculties of universities are a mix of researchers, psychologists, and, and practitioner coaches. And then I think that helps students a lot because many, many students, they, they are those who go to study coaching because they want to understand the power of coaching and apply it in their leadership and management. But there are those who are going to study coaching to become practice, practitioners. But, but, but uh, you will find the tendencies for people to go to universities because it's prestigious. But then when you come out of the university and then it becomes, uh, you, 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 you struggle if you haven't been practicing. Hence the combination of uh, practice and, and, and theory. And that's why they no longer wait for you to finish your, your, your degree before you can then be accredited. They, they immediately as they start, they say start coaching now so that you can make hours and practical experience. And when you finish your degree, at the same time, you can be accredited and credentialed, which, yeah. I, which I find quite very, very, very fascinating and very, it, it, it makes things very easy. But they, then there are academies which, which, uh, or, or, or institutions which just focus on, I guess Maslow is probably like that. Am I right? It looks like you are guys, you guys are coaching practitioners in that course. Yes. Dealing with the real issues. Yeah, they deal with the real issues. They, 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 they actually, their students... Are, are, are from HR people, etc., coming from the workplace, who come yes. to learn, and so because the, the whole idea is to, to, to is saying the manager is a coach, the manager yes. is a coach. So you are training um, the manager to have a coaching mindset, so that yes. it, it, the, the manager isn't looking for a coach somewhere to to to, to deal with the, his subordinates. He, he has developed a coaching mindset. And so as he deals with his people, he's actually applying the coaching principles mm. on, on a day to day. Mm. And that's mm. the beauty of, of, of this whole thing. That it, 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 there's a funnel that starts with your academic your fellow uh, doing research, and fil- but it filters ultimately to the, to mm. the benefit of the employee or to mm. the benefit of, uh, of the mm. uh, client. In fact, I, I meant to say earlier on that actually – Coaching is one of the fastest growing sectors in the world. Yeah, absolutely. It is actually, and I believe that we we haven't even tapped onto it. It's still, it is just happening now, uh, because I mean, I mean, the COVID itself, for instance. I mean, at ICF, uh, I don't know whether you have you have been approached, but uh, there's been a lot of pro bono work through the foundation to help people deal with the difficulties that are presented by the time we we find ourselves in. And after oh, that, people oh. then realize, but this, this can't just be needed when it's time of emergency. This is really like having a lawyer by your side. 
That's right. That's right. You'll understand so that very much. Coach- He's an ex-lawyer, George. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, yeah, when I, I'll tell you a story that when I when I moved from uh, practicing as an attorney and, and and went into commerce as a legal advisor, um, I, I, one of my bosses uh, asked, "So why why do we need to have a lawyer here? Uh, we can always look for them when we're in trouble." <laughs> but but the CEO. Who, who who was way ahead of this guy understood that actually no, as you arrange your deals, as you put it yeah. together, whatever you put, you actually need a lawyer in there so that you don't yes. need a lawyer when things go bust. And it's, <laughs> so it's the same thing, <laughs> it's the same thing with with coaching. That yes. coaching is not therapy. It's not when things go wrong. Yeah. It is it it is it is it is a tool that managers, employees, and anyone in the world can use to it, it, create I, I a, a better that future. In actual fact, if you have achieved something at this particular level without a coach, you must just know that with a coach you could have doubled or tripled that level. Aha. Uh-huh. And- that's that's what people are beginning to understand to appreciate that yeah. it's not it's not uh, in times of trouble <laughs> but yeah. rather a tool that actually can be used to grow and become better yeah because what it does should, yeah. it, it actually unlocks the potential that you you never even thought you have mm-hmm. you know and i mean you 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 like you like uh, referring to questions Questions is a, is a questions are a tool that you use to lo- unlock the potential from the client, but but the coaches are trained to know how to use questions to get the best out of the people. Right. Yeah, so therefore questions are a a tool. Yeah, that, and, that, and 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 if you know which questions and how to phrase the questions. Like the, you, you started very nicely at the beginning. You, you say if if you if you could imagine yourself being that person, I mean that is a beautiful way. It's like you are enticed to almost imagine yourself in that person, and then all of a sudden the 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 possibilities just evolve. Don't 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 answer. Imagine you are a CEO and you are confronted with this situation. That's a beautiful thing to hear. You know, and, imagine and you are in you that final. Know. Imagine you are in that final, and you are have the the, the penalty, and there's no. Mm-hmm. And immediately after that penalty, the game is over, and the game will be determined by whether you score or miss the penalty. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the power now, because now you got to visualize. Yeah. You got to you got to see yourself in that space, and and yeah. and, and and it it really does help. It, mm. So if if anyone is listening and they haven't used the coach, I'll give it a shot. You'll be amazed at at what you yeah. can achieve. Yeah, uh, wonderful. So so mm-hmm. I've already addressed the issue of the tools, George, um, and uh, and uh, there are a number of tools that one use. And, and actually, I one of the tools I like and it's a pity now it's difficult with a, a virtual. Or online coaching, but it's mm-hmm. I like visualization when I'm sitting with a client. That's a tool where you take a clean page, and right. and and I like what we are discussing. Just visualizing by the end of the coaching session, through that because people learn differently, especially if you know that people your client learns by pictures, and that is where now also assessment comes in. There's some assessments you can do. Uh, uh, you can make the clients do to determine as to how they learn. You know, do they learn by visualize, be visual, or do they learn by weight, or, or by by by, you know, uh, drawings and everything. So so that but that is if you have a long term relationship with a client, you're gonna be together for a while. It's worth a while fact, Sam, to find out their actually, living style. If I could just pop in there, actually. The question of what is your learning style is actually one of the questions a coach should be asking. 
You should yeah. actually be asking your client, what's your best learning style? Some people actually mm. prefer to tell you so that as you yes. now proceed with this engagement, you understand that if we use this, we are maximizing this guy's ability to, 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 to be creative. Yes. Actually, it's very powerful for the, for the managers and leaders to know such things. And imagine now you sitting with a CEO and he says, you know, I don't understand why this guy doesn't get it. And then you say to the CEO, the boss, have you ever tried to understand what their learning style is? Mm. You can imagine an aha moment that can come there. He probably is not going to know or he's probably going to say, oh, I never thought of that. So if you constantly tell it, throwing, throwing figures at this person, he learns better with pictures. Instead of shit, giving him a figures that make up that bridge, show him the figures in the form of components that build that bridge. <laughs> and voila, so we'll the guy you. is, uh, we'll get it. And in fact, the, the great students now, because teachers in, in some of these schools, they try and figure out what's this guy's best learning, learning uh, style. And when you get that, you have amazing yeah. what they produce. Because each one of us has got yeah. great, great potential with it. Absolutely. But if you're going yeah. to be throwing figures, yeah. as you say, to someone who learns yeah. pictures, well, <laughs> <laughs> inevitably this Or someone disaster. who learns through sounds. Who learns through sounds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Then you have to be problem. creative to say, how do, we put, how do we put this message in the form of a sound? Record it and give it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, this, these youngsters these days, they can't even write. So how do you <laughs> make sure uh, that... Uh, because they're bright. They're super, super bright. Mm. But maybe they love the message via the, the, the iPhone. <laughs> then we'll yeah. find, let's find a way yeah. of making sure the iPhone is the, is the teaching media. But it's... It, it, Mm. As opposed to say, write it all down on me on, on a piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. George, if you don't mind, because you seem to be an expert of coach uh, questions, they are, and I assume we're talking to coaches out there. There might be those who are coaches and want to mm. become coaches, mm -hmm. and they wonder what do we mean when we say questions are the most powerful. The most powerful too. The whole coaching is built around questions because conversations are started by questions, right? Now there are there are different kind type of questions. In fact, I have uh, the ICF promotes this organization that produces coaching tools and templates. I forgot them, and they have produced the. Uh, a set of questions, amazing set of questions that you could, mm -hmm. you don't have to cram them, but you need to know the grouping of questions that you need to use to achieve certain, mm -hmm. certain uh, impact in your coaching session. I mean, like open-ended questions or yes or no questions. And then the one that you said in imagine, I don't know what you call it, if you, if you want somebody to imagine the future, you know, asking those type of people. Yes, in other words, yes, make them travel yes, from one yes, space to another. So, so I think what right. is the, what I'm, the message I'm trying to bring across is that it's not every question that you ask a client that will help you achieve what you want. You need to know which kind of questions move clients in in, in what way, and then use them accordingly at the right time, rather than just bombarding questions. That is that is so so yeah. Uh, the example I, I I used maybe just to reiterate if someone hadn't been listening. So, in 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 each one of us, I've done articles uh, in, in in some publications where I've talked about the six the higher mental faculties, and uh, the higher mental faculties are the what we have as individuals and their perception. Your ability to 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 your real they say perception is reality, right? So when you change your perception about something, that, that, that your image of that thing changes. So if you've re read uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, 
he actually yes. advocates that you, if you're faced with a problem, and so you're sitting on a desk, so whoever is listening to you, you're sitting on a desk, and you write down the problem on a piece of paper, you then sit and read the problem from your chair and try and think about it as it, as it is now. Then you can stand up and go and sit on the other side of the table and look at that problem yes. from that angle. Or yeah. you could literally say, I have looked at this problem, but how would Sam, who I know very well, look at the problem? Because you know Sam, you know the way he thinks. Mm. How would he look? Mm. All you're doing there is trying to change your perception of something because you look at things through your own lens. But by saying, I want to look at the situation from Sam's land, it will change my perspective. So that's when, so what are the type of questions you would be asking someone around perception? You would then ask, mm. why, what, what, would, what would Sam do in this situation? Or if you had someone else just say what you said, what would you tell them? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 and uh, what would you do if you were in the role? So you, you are coaching an executive. He's complaining about his uh, subordinate. And you say to him, what would you do if you were in his role? Mm. Because see, the moment you, you ask somebody that, it forces him to shift from where their perception to say, how would this guy look at it? And those are the questions that you could. So the one I asked about imagination is, is uh, you're asking about, so let's play with the idea that you were now the CEO. <laughs> huh? What if this happened? If you were in that position. But what all you're doing is you're trying to tap into his Imagination. So let's go back to this my higher mental faculties that I talk about. That there is perception, yes. there is will. Will is the, your will to do something. So if you're asking questions about will, is uh, on a scale of one to ten, how confident are you about this? What would you do yeah. Yeah. Uh, to focus here and move yourself forward? So will, imagination, memory, reason, and intuition. Because now coaches are. The coaching world is now has come to realize that everyone has an intuition about something, a gut feel about something. Now, mm. it doesn't mean the gut feel about something is always right, but we've come to accept that it is a reality. So in a coaching conversation, you can actually get to a point where you are sensing something. Okay? So you can ask the individual to say, I'm sensing a lot of emotion in this. And the individual yeah. can say, oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yeah, you're right. You know, I'm feeling... Because intu everybody mm. has intuition. So mm. verbalize it. And, and if it's, because it's a safe space, if the guy says, well, I know, that's fine. But you, mm. because you haven't said I'm right about this, you simply said I'm sensing mm. something. And so, the what do you call these now, questions? That yeah, sorry, no, you, that you were asking. Mm. Yeah, I was saying. Uh, oh, that, uh, what do you call the questions? What do you call the questions? Uh, will that be a challenging question if I say uh, a client says something and then I I say to them, what what makes you think that way? Oh, you yeah. Because so what triggered this question coach, in your mind? You must remember your coach role as a coach is also to challenge assumptions. Yes. yes. Because we, we all make assumptions. Oh, I'm telling you every day we make uh -huh. assumptions. And some of them are well, mm. very wrong. <laughs> but you will make assumptions. Yeah. So by challenging the guy, see what makes you think like that? It's going to force him. Or oh, if they ask you a say, question, if they ask you a question, then you throw it back to them and say, "What do you think?" Yes, yes. What do you think is is actually a very legitimate 
uh, question because you're asking what he thinks. What is his perception? And yet, is the, and yet, is the, and yet he is the one who asked me the question. Because, because sometimes we, we, as we are always saying that the coach is not there to provide the answer. So no. it's always helpful when there's a client asks you something, they want you to give them an answer. And then you remember that your job is not to answer the questions. <laughs> he must answer his oh. own questions. Oh, yeah, you can rephrase it. You can rephrase it. You can. Yeah. But you, really your role is to, to get the best out of them. And if anyone is listening and he's not a coach, hear this. You have the answers within you. It's just what you yeah. need is someone who prods you in the right direction. That's, that's, that's. Mm. And a good coach will get you to pull yourself, pull things out from inside that you didn't think were in there. Mm. Absolutely. And I think, I think this is, you know, uh, by the way, you become better at this as you become experienced. I, I still remember my early days. We used to be given these coaches by our lecturer and, I mean, these questions, sets of questions. And he would sit there and they said, tomorrow you are going to do fish bowl coaching. You know the fish bowl coaching? Uh, mm -hmm. Coaching in front of other colleagues. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. they, afterwards they give you feedback. And it's the most difficult thing to do because they said you must, it must be a real something. It's not just a, a play. And then they give you a set of questions. And, hey, man, you know, you have all these questions, but when it comes to the session, you remember not even one. <laughs> So and I realized this, and this that this is why you should never the memorize. Purpose, <laughs> exactly. The idea is not to know all these questions, just to become familiar with the tab. Like, and like as you are as you are engaging with me right now, John, you are just remember reminding me of such some of those powerful questions. In actual fact, uh, one shouldn't drill them into your mind. You should get used to hear them being asked and observe the reaction of the person being coached. That's why fishbowl coaching is very powerful. Or even, even watch coaching being role played on a video. It's very, very powerful. Because then you get to see them being used and you get to see the client's reaction. And then you get to see how impactful actually they are. And then when you get when the client gets to an aha moment and says, Oh my God, I never thought this way. In fact, you're right. And then, and then, then you really enjoy the conversation with the client. Yeah. So, in other words, we are saying, George, and this takes us to the to the academic and the practitioner uh, topic we're talking about. That yes, academic work is very important in coaching, but the coaching at the end of the day is a practical thing. It is. It's not some. It's not a profession that you just pass and then you are a coach. You really pass, and then you start the process of truly becoming a coach. Uh -huh. that's, that's, and that takes that's, time. That's, 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 that takes time. That, 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 I always say to people, when you take uh, young men and you train them as soldiers in the battlefield and they are using, uh, what, they don't use live ammo in there, whatever, even if they do, but they know it's a safe space. <laughs> The day you put him in a real battle, that's a whole different ball game. Because the body reacts yeah. differently, etc. And when he passes that, now you have your soldier. So similarly with, with, with coaching, we can do as much academics as we want. It's when a client is sitting there with a real problem and he's expecting you to help them find the solution. That's when the, the rubber hits the road. <laughs> for, for, for that phrase that guys use. Because that's, that's the important yeah. part. And in coaching, yeah. there's a... There's a, there's a <laughs> okay, I'm back to my ICF questions <laughs> again. But the point is, there, there is in there that a coach must be comfortable in the territory of not knowing. In the territory of not knowing. You don't walk in as a coach and have answers for your client. No. You help him figure out. And so be comfortable if you don't know something and to, to, to continue to help. 
Don't don't walk in there like a knight in shining armor and you have all the answers for you. You're not that's being a consultant. Mm. That's being a consultant. A coach is not a consultant. Mm. A coach is not a consultant. Mm. I'm hearing echo, I'm not too sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's uh, you're coming out loud and clear. There's there's no problem on on our side. But uh, okay. yeah, the, you know this is this is powerful stuff. Uh, and and I mean you have just said something uh, profound that uh, continuous development as a coach is a must. Actually, you you do yourself a favor because you you have just reminded me so many things that you know you. They are out there, and sometimes you forget that you have these tools with you. And uh, and, uh, and and I guess uh, it's always good to to bring this topic and then start the conversation because you you're right. You go into a session, you really don't know what is going to come out. But when you come out of the session, if you have all these tools with you, you will be amazed how much you access them. Because then, in other words, the same way that we will help the client accessing the answers inside them. We also, through continuous coach development and conversations like this, we help ourselves to develop the ability to access the tools in our tool bag at the right time when they are required. And you also, as a coach, have have Um, a a hard moment in in that conversation. conversation. Oh, yes. Oh yes, uh, the, 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 the aha moment I like most is when I've applied a, a particular approach or a tool and and I see the impact immediately. I, I love those because it's a it's a fulfilling thing. But George, have you ever the other tool we use is ourselves as coaches, and I'm going to ask you here, put you on the spot. Uh, have you have you have you used yourself as an example? to enlighten a coach, a client, on something, using yourself as an example. That is, we, we, we regard, we, we, it's one of the most powerful tools is ourselves. Without shifting into an advisory mode. Yeah, I like to use the word... That, that speaks uh, to the point of examples. Yeah, I like to use the word testimony <laughs> to say, to, if I can give... Yes. I, I can. That's I, the right I ask for permission. I, I, I ask for permission. I ask for permission. To say, yes. yeah, this, can I yeah. give uh, can I, an example uh, of what happened to me in real life? And uh, if, yes. if I have something that is pertinent, that is, pertinent, that is on point, is I will share point. it. I will share um, it. Mm. And uh, sometimes it that helps. Doesn't sometimes it doesn't help. quite help. But when it helps, help. because... When we are coaching human beings who will definitely go through the same things that we go through. Um, mm. and, 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 uh, I may have navigated it differently and the result may have been actually negative. So I could actually say this is what I did and the result was negative. Or this is what I did the result was positive. Uh, mm. Because there's things that we did wrong. I mean, if you spice it back and say how many things have I done wrong, there are many things that I did wrong. But there are many things that I did right. There are many things that I did right. And so, why is it important to ask for permission, George? Yeah, George. Well, uh, it. I think it's part of my my coaching training. I was just that you know this is the client's show, right? This this is when when I'm coaching. This is the, the whole conversation is about the client, and um, not about you, the coach. No, 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 no. You you just a tool being which this guy is using to get better. And I, I, I'm saying it bluntly, but uh, but. Really, it's 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 the, the client's show, and uh, mm. uh, it, it's part of coaching you can, ethics. It's coaching ethics. Yeah, oh, you don't want to, de- to start delving into your life. But ah, yeah. let me tell you a joke. And I hope somebody's listening. It, you know, the joke is if you go to a party, right, and uh, there's someone uh, from whom everyone is running away from. You know what I mean? They go there, but he's running away from this guy. <laughs> the answer as to why everyone is running away from him is that this guy 
All he does all night is talk about himself. I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've achieved this, I've done this. That's why everyone is running away from it. Because normal human beings want to talk about, if you are talking to a human being, show interest, be curious in the other person. What do you do, my brother? Where have you been? What are your objectives? The person will stay engaged with you all night because you're finding out about them, their pains, their ambitions, their whole things. In fact, he can go home and, and say, guess what? I spoke for an hour with that old man, but I actually don't know anything about him. That is the key. So when you ask for permission, you want to avoid being that person who talks about himself. <laughs> good one, good one. So I think we have just uh, made it clear, uh, uh, clear what when we talk about examples or testimonies, this is a point we raise in this today's discussion that you can use yourself as an example, but it's a coaching ethics to ask for the client's permission to use yourself as an example. And you have explained it very well, George, because it's not your show, it is it's about the client and not you, the coach. You are the facilitator. Then, then let's reverse it and say uh, um, the, another tool or example is, uh, is when you, actually a tool, not example. When you observe something in a coaching session and you want to bring into the attention of uh, the client and and you will say that you will again also ask for permission to share an observation. Mm, mm. I like that one. It's, uh, it's very powerful, you know. Uh, uh, if they know your style, they know that there's something you have observed and you want to make them aware of. But you also can't just say, I see you doing this. When, when I was mentioning this, I saw you raising your eyebrows. You can't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll say, uh, can I offer you an observation? As I was telling you that story, I saw you sitting straight and, uh, or I saw, I saw you looking up in the, on, on to, into the roof, or I saw you raising your eyebrows. Is that, was that communicating something? Mm, you know? Mm, mm. Yeah. And that is very powerful because it, you, you, you are actually making them aware that you are fully present with them and you are observing what is going on with them. Yeah, Would you want to share what was going on in your mind as I was telling you the story? That's right. And you, you're exploring now. Uh, you're exploring. I explore. Say, okay. Yeah, what, 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 what is the significance of that? Uh, is, does it have any significance at all? <laughs> Or if I brought something to light that you will want to share, because you might be missing some powerful uh, impacts that you have brought. And then that's why, uh, and I think it's one of the ICF core competencies as well, that you you have to be fully present with the client. Yeah, there's, yeah. being fully present, there's also uh, the core competence that they call it listening actively. Yeah. Now, when you are listening actively, you, you will notice that. Because listening actively is, is, says you're also hearing what the guy is saying. But you know, in the world of communication, there is the said and the unsaid. <laughs> and both communicate something. You can hear the words somebody is saying. But their action is, is, is there's, a, there's a disconnect between what they are saying and what their body is saying to you. So remember, in, in the world of communication, they say 7% uh, of communication is your words. 38% is your tone, tone of voice. 55% is your body, your body moving forward, pushing back, etc. Et so when someone so is, when, is, someone is you are, when you are active in listening, you are seeing 
and hearing the words. You are seeing the expression of their eyes. You are seeing the expression of, 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 of their body. What is, the, what is the body saying to you? And then that's when you ask for permission to say, I noticed there was a sparkle in your eye. I noticed that uh, you, 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 you were grinning. You're, so you ask me in a way that is proper, what is that communicating? So if you sit so and you all you do as a coach is hear the word, then you are actually losing 93% of the communication. What is the tone? So if I say to you, Sam, you know, oh man, I'm so excited to be promoted. The, the words are, I'm excited to be promoted. The tone is, I'm excited to be promoted. So there's that so disconnect, that and you yeah. as a coach yeah. must be alive to that and, and inquire as to why yeah. is that? That, 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 that. Because, and so... Yeah, I, I, I must comes, be able to say, but I would have expected you to be very excited in the tone. Yeah, absolutely. It sounded like... <laughs> Absolutely. Sounded so. like you are not excited about this promotion. Uh, 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 no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it to you, but really, you know, <laughs> walking into the house and saying, my I'm wife, I love for, you. I'm not ready for it. I'm not, <laughs> you say, you know, my husband says to me, I love you, but he's frowning. You know? <laughs> so there's a clear disconnect between I love you and, and you're frowning. Yeah. In other words, yeah. and so, but you must remember, you must remember the way we are wired, we are wired as, as human as beings human being, is, that is that we will pick we will the, signals the signals of the tone and the body. You may say one thing, but if it says disconnect between your voice, uh, sorry, your words and your tone and body uh, reaction. Then let me tell you one thing. Yeah, People one will thing. pick up and they'll say, no, you don't mean what you say. Mm. And if, there is, if, if yeah. that comes through, that comes through. If, if you want to lose credibility, to lose credibility that's, where that's where you lose credibility, big time. Because people will say, oh, his words don't mean you know, You know, you remind me of uh, 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 an incident. I won't go into detail because it was a private matter, but I'll just share with you. Okay. Where I was, uh, I was expressing a, a desire of something, and uh, and this friend, the colleague of mine, says, ah, "You know what? I I don't see the spark in what you are telling." You. <laughs> I tell you this. Yes, I go until today. I have not forgotten. I, 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 and then and it, they were saying, "Listen, you are telling us something, but we're seeing something different." Mm -hmm. And I was so embarrassed because until today I don't know what was my body language showing them. But that what they were saying ultimately got confirmed later, years after I was no longer with them. Okay, that that your body language is what you meant. <laughs> that yeah, that, uh, that at that time I thought I, I meant what I said, but they picked it up that no, 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 there was no alignment with what. My body language was saying something different. Uh, do you know the reality is that we are picking this up in conversations daily. It's just that most people will, will see that they will they will just make it an assumption, make their own conclusion, and then walk away. But they have already made a decision about about you. That uh, uh, yeah. So as a coach. The last thing you want to do is come across your client as not being authentic. That's the word that they use, authentic. If you're not an authentic coach, you're going to be losing clients every day. Why? Because they can read. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you, you literally, so when you get to a country conversation, if you can't help the guy say it, oh, sorry, no, no, no. But if you can, if you it can. the energy, you know, energy, they talk about, uh, about uh, 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 we, uh, we vibrate, we are uh, uh, mm. vibration in motion, all of everything in, on, everything in the universe vibrates. Mm. And therefore, mm. I pick up your, 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 mental, up your, your, your mental likes that very much. Your mental. Uh, <laughs> Bob Proctor, yes. Just, He's always talking he about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bob Proctor. Yeah, he yeah. loves yeah. that.
Right. Because so, intuition so George, is vibration. Uh, yeah. You know, being a coach is like being a teacher. No? It's very serious. It, it, we always say enjoy it, but it's a very serious affair, that relationship with your client. It is absolutely uh yeah and 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 the best coaching relationships are where both parties have absolute confidence in each other those are the best those are the best coaching uh, relationships and uh, you have to work at creating a safe space for your for your client and be at a place where as i say comfortable and say listen i don't know about this uh can I ask you Can this? Ask you uh, how do you feel about that? Feel about that? And it's an and open conversation. Open conversation. Mm. Mm. Uh, it's mm. an interesting. It's an interesting subject. Look, <laughs> we're here. We are talking coaching. Yeah, <laughs> we've been talking for two hours yeah. coaching. So. <laughs> yeah, so but you know we have covered. The, I really wanted us to cover this point. Let me just remind our listeners what we we discussed, uh, I mean, this is, this is our professional executive coaching conversation. We we have these conversations every Saturday, uh, uh, 1800 hours South African standard time. And the purpose is exactly what we are doing now, is just to enlighten each other, uh, volunteer information, insights, knowledge, ideas. And uh, we, we are not the experts, we are just members of the coaching fraternity that uh, are bringing issues and hopefully by so doing we learn, but also you learn as people listening. But these are the points we address, George and listeners. We first spoke about the coaching philosophy and George, you came up with a very nice explanation, which is the theory that actually guides your thinking, uh, your thinking or your, act, your, your, your behaviors, right? Mm -hmm. So we said it's very important to, to be able to, to, to define your coaching philosophy, you know? And then I said that it might be a, a value system or a principles, uh, you name it, but we call it a coaching philosophy. And then we spoke about the framework. And I said that what I understood, uh, and this was from my college days, what I understood as a coaching framework is actually you have a framework within which you package your coaching model. So, 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 so if you think of it, a frame of a car, uh, it might, they might be the same frames, but they build different models around it. So mm -hmm. coaching is also has got a frame on which you plant your coaching model. And I say that every coaching model must address the coaching perspective, the coaching process, and the coaching purpose. The perspective is what the, coach, the client comes into a session with. They come with certain ideas, certain belief system, with culture, values, uh, they come as they are with their experience and lack of experience. They are not sick people. They are not uh, damaged. They are not, you don't repair them. You take them as they are. You meet them at the point where they are. That is the coaching perspective. And the process is how you then conduct your coaching, either as a program over 12 months, six months, or the, it also speaks to the actual coaching session itself, which is uh, my coaching sessions will have three components. That is the checking in, conversations and checking out. So so that that is a that's a part of the framework. And then of course ultimately you have the purpose that is the reason why you are engaging in a coaching session or a coaching program. And then we move on to talk about the model itself and we shared a number of models. We spoke about the bridge model, we spoke about the create model, I spoke I referred to the fuel model. There's many other models that are abbreviations. Some of them are pictorial, some of them are just acronyms, but, but every one of us can come and we are encouraged as coaches to have our own coaching model because it helps you organize your own coaching program. And in fact, the clients do get to be used to, to, be used to your approach. The famous coaching model is the GROW model. Some people put TA at the end of GROW, which is called GROW to Action. And then you have models like, oh, there's quite many, George. I have one called ideas model, initiating, discovering, evaluating, aiming, and successful actions. Mm -hmm. There is a clear model. The clear model is abbreviation, contract, listen, explore, action, and review. Achieve model is quite interesting one, is to assess current situation, C for creative brainstorming, H for hone goals, 
I for initiate option generation, E for evaluate options, V for valid action program design, E encourage momentum. And then we concluded that it doesn't matter which model you use. At the end of the day, the client is not interested in the model you use. They are only interested in you being fully present with them, being their thinking partner and help them achieve their absolute maximum potential and, and then move forward. We spoke then about the tools and we said questions are the most powerful tools you use to, to enlighten and help the clients achieve their potential. We then also spoke about the examples you know, and George referred to that as testimony. What we haven't spoken about is analogies. I like analogies. You know, an analogy is, uh, you know, how would you explain an analogy, George? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, we spoke about the bridge, for instance. I was saying that, uh, I mean, you hear people say, oh, let me use not use the bridge. If you, in meditation, we talk about uh, imagine your problems or your thoughts being just the clouds hovering above the sky from one point to another. Just observe them, but don't bring them inside you. Using the analogy of uh, clouds, but you're talking about the thoughts. So, so those are that's, that's an analogy. So, and it all, all. So, I think George, what we are saying that coaching is a very creative and fully engaging activity and all of us have got okay. our own okay. styles and we it's, connect it's, with it's, our client Have you see that yeah i thought okay. i wish so, i hope i summarized it very well george yes uh, but I, I, I was trying to to ex, explain the, uh, uh an analogy i found a good one here uh, which yeah. is like a life is a box of chocolates <laughs> oh yeah so exactly analogy is saying something like something else to make an explanation right Yes. You, you exactly. never know what you're going to get. So, yeah. so it's something like that, the analogy. And those are very powerful. Uh, uh, when you use all these various uh, permutations, you, you tend to, to really make a, a huge impact on clients. And actually, they, they, the clients start liking your style, and, uh, and then it becomes a good partnership. Yeah. So it's uh, ten. Is it ten minutes to go, George? I'm gonna leave the few, uh, leave time to you to just sum up and at the same time check out before we end our conversation. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think, as I said earlier, uh, coaching is coaching one of the is fastest of growing. The fastest growing. Uh, uh, businesses in the world. It is fast it is growing fast because it is helping more and more people. And particularly, as you said, in this uh, pandemic that we find ourselves, people have found the need for coaches to help them move forward. Um, and uh, I can only see uh, greater use of, of coaching. But aligned with, aligned that, with that is that, is that it is, it is whoever is in the coaching is profession, the coaching profession now, now must be must engaging be continuous, continuous learning, learning to improve and get better get to help better, people better. Help people better. Um, uh, I draw an analogy, draw an analogy with the MBA. I think 20 years 20 ago, years people went to get an MBA for the sake of MBA. Uh, and, now, and now when you get an MBA, get, people will say, what is the practical use of this thing? Uh, it, 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 you don't put it on a wall and say, I have a certificate. So similarly with coaching, you don't go and get coaching certificates and put them on the wall. The practical use, how are you going to help the people? And so we look at coaching as how do you help people? Our role is to help people. And that's that's, that's the important thing. Today's topic is that I would have... Love to have more people uh, present so that we share more ideas. But uh, I think we, we, yeah, we, we, we did our best with what we had, and uh, hoping that this uh, podcast grows and we get more and more people uh, to tune in and and contribute. Because the whole essence of this thing is is really not for us to talk, but to hear views, questions. questions. And, uh, and pick uh, issues that we can go investigate, analyze, and come back and help others.
So yeah, that's it. I'm looking forward to next week. Next week. To talking to more people. Thank you. Thank you, George. Yeah, thanks to those who tuned in. We really enjoyed it. Uh, we had some interesting insights to share. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to next week, same time. We will send an uh, announcement as we did today. And uh, yeah, hopefully we we'll continue growing uh, as coaches and, and then, of course, inspire those who want to become coaches and those who want to be coached. Uh, and by so doing, we are, we are contributing to the growth of the, of the industry. Thank you very much. And uh, you all take care and have a good week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers now, guys. Thanks. Cheers, Bye -bye. George. Bye-bye.